In 1995, Europe was the scene of genocide. Boga molio da dođe da ubije mene, ali jednostavno nisam smio da 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 ga zovem da me ubije. I The bodies that lie here are the victims of the continent's greatest atrocity since the Holocaust. You know, after the Second World War, uh, the whole world said never, never, ever again. But that happened, happened in, in the heart of Europe. Your mind cannot grasp the fact that somebody would deliberately take another human being, execute them, and then hide their body, and then repeatedly attempt to hide their body. More than 8,000 men and boys were hunted down and murdered and then buried in secret mass graves. Their remains are still being found today. Twenty years on, the survivors and eyewitnesses who have returned to Srebrenica warned that the lessons of genocide risk being forgotten. My name is Tamanna Rahman. I'm part of the charity Remembering Srebrenica, which was set up to commemorate the genocide. I'm on a journey to find out what happened to the people who lived here. Bosnia. One of the world's great crossroads. A melting pot of cultures and identities. All eyes were on this country in 1984 as it hosted the Winter Olympics. Within 10 years, the world's eyes would return, but for entirely different reasons. On the ashes of the former Yugoslavia, leaders playing on identity politics rose to power across the region. Ultra-nationalist forces planned to create a greater Serbia filled only with ethnically pure Serbs. This meant Bosnian Muslims had to be cleansed from the land. The most powerful military in the region, Serb forces swept to power, sending Muslims and Croats from villages in the north and east to concentration camps and slaughtering thousands of others. This was a battle of empire expansion, dressed up as a battle of faith and ethnicity. By 1995, Serb forces had taken almost every village in eastern Bosnia and flushed them of Muslims. Srebrenica was one of only three places that were safe until tens of thousands of refugees poured in. The town, declared a UN safe zone, had been under siege for three years. During this period, people lived in crowded conditions and many starved to death. But it wasn't always like this. Khatija Mehmedovic remembers what life was like before the war. Tako da sam bila zadovoljna i brakom. U braku sam dobila dvoje djece, prvog sina 74. godište Azmira i drugog sina 77. godište Almira. Ja sam mislila moje srećne ima kraja. To je sasvim izmijenilo geografsku sliku iz Srebrenica i čitave Bosne i Hercegovine. And on July 11 the town fell. As he entered the town, General Radko Mladic spoke to Serb cameras. 
i napokon došao je trenutak da se posle bune protiv Dahija Turčimo osvetimo na ovom prostoru. Hasan Hasanovic is now one of the guides at the Memorial Center, just a few miles north of Srebrenica, but he remembers the day well. So I was with my twin brother, uh, with my father, my younger brother and my, my, my mother. Uh, they had a two-pot to Charlie. So we didn't, have, we didn't have time to say goodbye. We just, uh, it was all, uh, we were all in chaos. As the Serbs moved in, women and children headed for the nearby UN base in Potocari. The men and boys, like Hassan, filmed here, were worried about how the Serbs would treat them and made for the woods. <laughs> Rastajali smo se samo na dva, na tri dana i to je jedina briga moja bila. Umorit će se, bit će glani, oglanjat će, bit će ženi. Oprostite, suza mi je izdajica, nikad ne bi to uradila. Ali suza, mogu pričati o svemu, ali kad dođe do djece da pričamo o djece, zaista mi bude tada najteži. A naročito mom malom sinu, kad smo se rastajali, on je svoje ruke stavio oko mene i molio me, idi mami, molim te kod umprofora, ti ćeš sustat, nećeš moći ići pre košume, pješke. Kad je došlo vrijeme da se rastanem, on dar me odmah o sebe svojim rukama i rekao mi je, id sam da ne vidim kud se otišla. Stavio ruke na oči, svi su, ali nije to moja djeca da su plakala, tada se mnoge porodice rastavljaju. The few hundred Dutch peacekeepers at the base waiting for UN backup that never came, handed over their weapons, and men and boys, to the Serbs. For those men, and the men who tried to escape, this was the beginning of the single most horrific week of slaughter in recent European history. A column of around 15,000 men had been formed, including the families of Hassan and Hatija. The plan was to walk to the nearest safe town, some 70 miles away but less than half made it. I'm going to meet one of the few who did. Nejad Abdic was 17 at the time and has only recently begun to tell his story. Iza mojih leđa je brdo gdje je bila zasjeda, gdje je prekinuta kolona i gdje je ostalo hiljada dvije muškaraca i dječaka. Uglavnom, to su dječaci moje dobit. Ajte, malci, zvište, dikte ruke uvi samo, ajte! Nakon što su srpski vojnici počeli zvati na megafone, da smo opkoljeni, da izađemo iz šume, da se predamo, nismo imali izbora, jednostavno niz ovo brdo, došli smo na to brdo, sišli smo niz šumu, niz ove livade. Nežad i tisućenje men i boji koji su učili s njim, su učili na trakci. Od vlasti teorije. I na kraju... Kada smo došli ispred te zgrade i čuli smo naređenja vojnika ljudima da izlaze po dva, po tri iz učionice, iz drugih učionica. I od prilike dok bi se išli iz stepenice ispred škole, čula je se rafalna paljba. Ajde, vuci ga! To je trajalo skoro do ponoći. Oko ponoći je došao red na nas. Počeli smo izlaziti jedan za drugim napolje. I niza stepenice ispred ulaza su se vidjeli lijevo i desno gomjeno mrtvi ljudi. Hasan Hasanovic, who had found his way to the head of the column, managed to escape the Serb ambush, which had led to Nejad's capture. I kept pushing forward, and I was constantly, constantly pushing forward. Uh, I was restless, and I remember um, uh, just like seven kilometers afterwards, I, I heard shooting. Then the bullets were hitting me by trunks. And on the 15th of, of July, um, as we walked, uh, someone said that the, the Serb soldiers were so close. Then uh, I heard them shouting, you know, out loud, uh, hooray, you know, hooray, like thousands of voices. 
I really got scared and I said to myself, you know, today I'm, I'm going to die. In the chaos, Hatija's family became separated. U domu kulture u Pilici, to je sve zvornička općina, isto bio mi je mlađi sin i tu znajući to sam slušala jednog svjedoka kad je govorio da se krili ispod pozornice i jadnici da se sakriju. To su bila djeca. Hasan's twin brother was also killed there, along with 500 others. Nejad's ordeal continued. Bio sam bos i nešto mi se lijepilo po nogama, a to je vjerovatno krv od ljudi. Popeli smo se tu na kamion i vozio je desetak minuta asfaltnim putem, a onda je skrenuo na makadamski put jer je se tresao prilikom vožnje. I na jednom je samo stao, pored kamiona čula je se rafalna paljba. Da izlazi po pet ljudi i od prilike dok oni izađu nakon minut možda počini rafalna paljba i tako to se ponavlja. Došao je red na mene i ja sam iskočio zajedno sa drugima i oni su rekli da nađem mjesto. Ja nisam u tom momentu znao kako mjesto iza kamiona kako smo išli. U stvari vidjeli smo redove mrtvih ljudi. To su sve trenuci, sve se tako brzo odvijalo i kako smo prilazili tamo tim redovima. U tom momentu ja sam samo razmišljao da neću se patiti, da brzo ću umrijeti. I kako su rekli da padnemo, Počela je pucnjava i ja se ne sjećam kad sam pogođen, samo sam ležao i drhtao sam i boljela me desna strana, stomaka i ruka. Med se svoko meni pogađalo u kamenje i kada su bijeli te ljudi iza mene, tada me pogodilo u nogu. Tada me meta pogodio u nogu i imao sam užasne bolove, nisam smio da vrisnem, ali sam se samo ustegao jako i... I jako sam se tresao i... I nakon nekog vremena oni završavaju sa ubijanjima i jedan od vojnika se obraća i govori drugom i ovo treba sve pregledati u koga je toplo tijelo, treba mu još po jedan metak u glavu. A on odgovara jebeš i matir mrtve su. I na jednom samo čizma staje ispred mojih očiju i Boga molio da dođe da ubije mene, ali jednostavno nisam smio da ga zovem da me ubije. Nežad managed to narrowly escape, walking for days with painful injuries, evading recapture by the Serbs. But what he witnessed was genocide in action. Thousands of men and boys were murdered in similar ways across the region, their bodies then hidden in mass graves. I'm going to the capital Sarajevo to find out what happened next. What happened in Srebrenica and the weeks after complicated what's been described as the world's greatest forensic science problem. 
Bosnian Serbs had buried the bodies of thousands of men in mass graves, but it soon became clear that questions were being asked about where they were. And so began the process of digging up those bodies and reburying them in different locations. And it was the job of the International Commission on Missing Persons to piece together that puzzle. Catherine Bomberger is its director. Your mind cannot grasp the fact that somebody would deliberately take another human being, execute them, and then hide their body, and then repeatedly attempt to hide their bodies. For every single body that we've identified um, relevant to Srebrenica, we've had to do at least have at least seven different DNA matches because the bodies are so art disarticulated. In a normal case, we may just have one DNA match, for example, because the body is there. But we've basically had to reconstruct the body using a DNA match from a femur, using a DNA match from, from a tooth sample for, or from a skull sample to try to reassociate the body. Um, and then to provide the, the body to the families has been equally traumatizing. A few toys are all that remain to remind her teacher of her sons. Nisu bili krivi, samo su bili krivi što se rodili u vjeroispovijesti islamskoj i što se tako zvali njiha ime ubila. I danas živim potpuno sama. Vratila sam se u kuću što smo gradili ja i moj muž sa djecom. To je naša porodična kuća. Međutim, teško je živiti, ali prošlost ne možemo vratiti, iz prošlost, iz prošlost moža, moramo učiti. Za, zašto govorim? Znači, dva, skoro 20 godina je prošlo, nikad nisam govorio to, uglavnom sam šutao. Jer sve više oni koji još uvijek negiraju to što je se desilo. Srebrenica je data onima koji su počinili genocid. I time je rečeno sve. Jednostavno, sutra moje dijete koje će ići ovdje u školu, nadam se, o tome neće ništa moći naučiti. Ali... The situation is not very simple and a great challenge to live here. The international community had waited and watched the Bosnian war for years before taking action. But it was the murder of more than 8,000 men and boys that spurred them to find an end to the conflict. I found it quite hard to sleep last night after hearing the stories of our survivors. To be hunted through the woods like animals for days just because of your religion in Europe only 20 years ago is hard to process. The international community failed Srebrenica then and in forgetting to commemorate it now and learn its lessons, we risk failing it again. A complex political deal means that Eastern Bosnia, including Srebrenica, is now under the control of the Serb Republic. It's a fragile peace, and for all sides, a raw subject. It's estimated that around 100,000 people died in total in more than three years of war. But Srebrenica is the sorest spot. It's taken years for the country to come to terms with what happened, but they are beginning to do so. Here in central Sarajevo, photographer Tarek Samara has spent more than a decade collecting the names and photographs of those who were killed. When I came to the Eastern Bosnia, when I came to the body, I was informed and 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 I was informed
bio sam svjedok, ali i da sam bio obavezan, da sam imao obavezu da svoje fotografije radi istine podijelim u svijetu. Danas, 20 godina poslije, kada živimo u vremenu i svjedećemo u jednom vremenu, u vremenu ksenofobije, antisemitizma i islamofobije, govorimo o novim ratovima, mislim da je potrebno otvorati pitanja, otvorati dijaloge, razgovarati, educirati mlade ljude. At the gallery is a group from the UK which the charity Remembering Srebrenica has brought over. I feel emotional about it. Um, I can't imagine the fear that these people felt. Um, what struck me is how recent it was. Yeah. You know, these are things that happened well in our lifetime. Yes. I'm thinking, where was I when this was going on? Yes. And I was working out roughly where I would have been, and it didn't touch me at all. And yet, I think in school we do Holocaust really well. Yes, we do. And this is something that's just gone right under the radar. Yes. And we need to do it a lot more. As a a member of the human race, you actually look at it and you actually think to yourself that that could have, if we were born in the wrong country, behind the wrong line, that could have been us. Believe me, what happened in Bosnia can happen anywhere. It can, it, it can happen even in, in your country if you let wrong individuals to get in power. So that, it, it, that, that is why this story is very important. Srebrenica, Crna Rupa, Čovječanstva, to je jedna velika mrlja ostala. A svako zlo treba u startu zaustaviti, jer zlo, nacionalizam, fašizam, to se širi kao korom. Svi jednaka prava da uči jednostavno i onim stvarima koje su stvarno desile, a, a ne, ne samo da se stvaraju nove generacije koje, koje izlaze pune mržnje. I... More than anything, the story of Srebrenica is a powerful reminder of what happens when hatred is allowed to grow without check. In a world where tensions over ethnicity and religion seem to be on the rise, we must continually remind ourselves of stories like this to ensure they never happen again. <laughs>